Jake Ludington here at IBM Impact, and I'm here with Tom Banks. And you've got a pretty interesting RC car project here that's based on Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and WebSphere Liberty, am I correct? That's correct, yeah. So we've got these, uh, what we call Liberty cars. And what it is, is it's a radio control car where we took the uh, radio receiver outside of the car and we plugged in a Raspberry Pi computer instead. So this Raspberry Pi is using the GPI opens to talk to a PWM controller board, which emulates the same signals that a radio receiver would have sent to the car's motors. And we're able to control that directly from software on the Raspberry Pi. On top of the Raspberry Pi, we installed WebSphere application server Liberty Profile, which is a, a lightweight Java EE application server. And on top of that, we installed a Java EE web application that we quickly knocked together in the lab. We added a USB-powered Wi-Fi router to the Raspberry Pi, so it's got its own Wi-Fi hotspot, it's running its own Wi-Fi network, so you connect a mobile device directly to the Wi-Fi network, pointed at the web page controlled by the web application, and in a JavaScript web page, you're able to drive the car around with about 10, 20 milliseconds latency, without needing any sort of uh, application installing on your phone other than a web browser. To add to that, we've got a racetrack here today, uh, with a white finish line. So what we've done is we've fitted an Arduino using the new Arduino user feature that you can store to Liberty. So that's an optional module you can add to the application server that lets your EE code directly talk to and work with Arduino computers. So we've got an Arduino on the front with an LED and a uh, light sensor underneath and when the car drives over the white finish line that reflects the light from the LED into the light sensor so the cars are able to time their own laps as they're racing round. And this is just a, a cool demo to show a few things, A, on how fast our, our software is, which is always great, and B, the kind of Internet of Things demos that you can put together now using some very cheap sensors, uh, an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. All of this is battery powered and is using you know, less than a couple of, uh, of amps of power for the whole setup to be running, which is great. So for somebody that's a developer, what does this kind of uh, hint at in terms of the possibility of Internet of Things? So it shows that you can take something that's uh, more heavyweight than something like Node.js, which seems to be uh, something very popular in the, in the Internet of Things space at the moment, which does make sense since it's, so, since it's so small and fast. But you can also look at other platforms, such as Java EE, where you're getting um, better a application logic execution, you've got more user features uh, or more features that you can enable, such as easier database access. Um, you can write it in Java, you've got your Java EE security if you're worried about security at all. Um, and you can, you can put these, these um, setups onto very low power devices. We're just trying to show that the, the, ro the world of embedded devices and the Internet of Things doesn't just belong to um, JavaScript and, and, and other languages. It, it can be um, enabled and used with something like uh, Java, which people always think of as a very heavyweight, uh, very, very um, demanding language to write in uh, for embedded devices. But you, you don't necessarily need that. You can just use Java to be able to control these devices for the Internet of Things.